Hello, Brian Kluger. Hi, Brian. Nice How to meet you. you. Hi, nice Brian. To meet you. It's nice to meet you. Going off of uh, going off of that, uh, I was curious if there was a particular moment in the movie when you watched it again, where you said, "Like, holy shit, this is the different movie," and I, I really respect it right now. I think when I said, "Take my horse to his own room." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who would say a name like that? <laughs> what? Yes. Being to bed with your horse. Um, there were a few things that made me laugh out loud. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I can't explain uh, really what a sort of burden this thing was. And I remember at the time, you know, um, and I managed to see the movie, uh, and, and all the porn that was uh, put, in, put in it, at the expense, of course, of other scenes. So it made no sense at all, but Guccione could care less about that. You know, it was a real betrayal, a terrible betrayal of certainly the actors, and I'm sure that Gore Vidal felt the same way, but he kind of deserved what he got because, you know, he wouldn't do any rewrites. He was calling me drunk at three, four in the morning, and, you know, and I'm like, hey, Gore, I've got to be up in two hours to do this crap that you wrote. <laughs> and you know, he just was lazy about doing any rewrites. And so of course, in the end, we had to survive. But you know, it was impossible to survive the owner of the stuff inserting hardcore pornography. And that you couldn't get around, you know, so. It, it, and I don't want to interrupt, but something that I think a lot of people don't know is we had uh, a year's worth of scripts. And there's the Gore Vidal script, and then there's the script that when Tinto and Malcolm got involved, mm. that you start to see a lot of things flipping and changing. And one of the insults Tinto threw out to Gore is he said, if Gore doesn't shut up, I'll publish a script. Yeah. <laughs> the first one. And the reality is that yeah. something that a lot of people don't know is that Malcolm and a writer named Ted Whitehead contributed immensely to the narrative. He was so, a friend of mine who was a playwright in London, and I got him, talked him into getting on a plane. It wasn't that hard to come to Rome <laughs> for a month, you know, stay at my villa. You know. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. And they're going to pay you. So, and, and it was great because he was really, he'd done this amazing play called Alpha Beta with Albert Finney and Rachel Roberts. And, um, you know, it's. Uh, the other interesting thing is, and uh, I'll say this with Tom here because it's forgotten, is that Tinto Brass, who sadly is uh, not well, he's 90 years old, you know, it's a testament also to him because he, you know, he was under so much pressure from Guccione and the money people, you know, and he refused to cave in. And he uh, did the film that we always thought we were making, and he wouldn't make any. Um, he wouldn't uh, take, you know, uh, Guccione's suggestions, which were terrible anyway. And he was, by the way, I've never known a man so loathed as Guccione, even by his own children. And of course, he died in a, in a trailer park, right? Yes. It's called Karma. It's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then um, coming back all these years later and watching this amazing character you play in Laird, if you could insert both of you, your character from this movie, into any other movie to make that movie better, <laughs> what would you insert him into? I'll let Tom. I knew it. I knew it. Right in that moment, I was like, he's going to turn and say, yeah. you answer. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm Sleepless sorry. in Seattle? I think, <laughs> I mean, a fisting scene is going to improve any movie. Okay. <laughs> it was an amazing time. You know, when we made the movie, it was sort of, of course, the end of an era. I, well, you didn't really realize that at the time, of course. But although you've got a feeling that things can't go on like this. I mean, I drove into the gates of the studio one day and literally there was a mob. 
and I, and I said to him, I had a Cockney driver <laughs> who kept getting lost in Rome. He hadn't got a clue where it was. I went, Tommy, what the hell? He goes, Mal, these are all the extras. They think they haven't been paid. They're expecting you to pay them. I went, what do they want me to do? Throw gold pieces out of the window? <laughs> I went, Jesus. I went, actor, actor. <laughs> and they were bouncing up and down on the car. And it was, uh, that was just a normal day, you know. My father came to visit and he stayed at this villa, you know, that I was staying in. Sounds very grand. It was the Bur with the Burtons that stayed there, but it was horrible. It was so horrible. Anyway, um, it was really interesting. And my father kept saying, "When am I coming to the set?" You know, I went, "Dad, you know, I'm, uh, I'd look at the oh Jesus." No, Dad, it was, just, it was just too difficult this week. So I come down at six to get in the car. He's already sitting in the back of the car, and I went, "Oh my God!" Anyway. So we drove to the set, and it was a scene where I had to take a piss. I had to, I'm talking away and saying, well, I am Rome, wherever I am, Rome is, Psst. you know. Took a piss, and then the, the lackeys come out and clean it up, which is what happened. I mean, you know, they took, dump, well, they did that in, of course, um, in Louis the Sixteenth court at Versailles. But, just took a dump or a pee right there, and it was clean immediately. And so I did this, and I went, have you had enough coffee? I went, well, I'll take another one. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to go. <laughs> and boom, I got the thing, I went, yes, cut, print, great, great. My father, who was sitting there, leaning on his stick, he stood up. And I came and he went, that was bloody fantastic. <laughs> so I've never seen anyone act like that. He just pissed like that. <laughs> On cue, he went, that's bloody brilliant. I said, thanks, Dad. <laughs> and then he went off to the bar in the studio. They had a bar there. And, you know, I'd get a couple of coffees or whatever every day and I'd pay my bill at the end. The guy comes, my father gone and so the week later the guy comes in and he goes could you pay your bill i went yeah i said what twenty dollars six hundred and eighty dollars i went what well, what he went yeah papa tom he came into the bar and he went drinks for everyone <laughs> my son's paying <laughs> like how often do you think about the roman <laughs> Well, obviously, I think about it quite a lot. <laughs> Imagine going back to that time. I mean, when you go to Rome, I mean, and the traffic is, is absolutely, you think it's bad here? Oh my God, it's lunacy there. But if you go, you go around the Circus, Circus Maximus and you see Caligula's house, there it is, Nero's house. I mean, it's just sort of mind boggling. And then, somebody's actually drawn in by what it looked like in the day. And it's just really uh, magnificent. And um, I, think, I think we're ready for a really good Roman movie, you know. Thank you so much. Yes, you bet.